Imagine that we are asked to solve w to the 3 is equal to 1, which is a cubic equation that has a known equal to w. Sure that we all know how to get one of the answers. If we just take the cubic root in both sides of the equation, we would come up with w is equal to 1. And that is one of the solutions of that equation. However, this equation has two more solutions, but what happens is that they are complex numbers. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve equations that somehow involve complex numbers. To solve equations that involve complex numbers, either in the solution or in the right-hand side, you just have to remember how to calculate the power of a complex number given an exponential or polar form. Remember that we saw that that is the Morris formula. To start, I'm going to ask you a question. What happens with the modulus and the angle of two equal complex numbers? Imagine that we have z1 equal to r1 by e to the power of theta 1i and z2 is equal to r2 by e to the power of theta 2i. And then I tell you z1 is equal to z2. Then what happens with the modulus and the angle? In the case of the modulus, if I'm telling you that this right-hand side and this right-hand side have to be equal, one can conclude that if two complex numbers are equal, their modulus are as well equal. So R1 is equal to R2. However, that is not necessarily true for the angle. So for the angle, I'll ask you to think about these two numbers, 2 by e to the power of pi i, and then 2 by e to the power of 3 pi i. You can see that in this case, the modulus are the same. But then, do you think that those two numbers are the same? And if they are the same, what is happening with their angles. If we plot those two complex numbers, you can easily see if they are equal or not. To plot complex numbers that are given an exponential or polar form, we will build a circle with radius equal to the modulus of our complex number. So in this case, 2. Therefore, we know that our complex number will be somewhere on this circumference. Right, in order to place the number in the circumference, what we are going to do is to have a look at the angle, which in the first case is pi, and the second case is 3 pi. So for set 1, we have to take an angle of pi. Remember, an angle of pi is half revolution. So we have that set 1 will be here. What about Z2? Z2 has an angle of 3 pi. So 3 pi is nothing else but 2 pi plus pi. And 2 pi is a complete revolution. So we start here, we do a complete revolution, and then we have to add pi. So we end up in exactly the same place as where Z1 was. Therefore, those two numbers are equal. Z1 is equal to Z2. And we can clearly see their modulus are equal. Therefore, what can you say about their angle? If you have a look at this, theta2, which is the angle of the second number, is equal to pi, which is the one of the first angle, plus 2 pi, which is a complete revolution. In general, when two complex numbers are equal and they are given an exponential or polar form, what happens is that the angle of one of them is equal to the angle of the other one plus 2 pi k. And 2 pi k means that you have to add a multiple of 2 pi. In this case, we go back to theta 2, your k is 1, because we've only done one revolution, where k is an integer. So from now on, for both the polar and the exponential form, we will consider the angle to be, rather than only theta, theta plus 2 pi k. That's the only thing we are changing from the previous definition we had in our previous videos. 